So to show in a really clear way the direct combative importance of non-telegraphic motion, Dan is going to hold his hand out. Clearly, he is inside the fighting measure, or I am inside his fighting measure. Again, fighting measures are not equal. We'll talk about that another time. But he, I am inside his fighting measure, the range of which I, I do not have to, which means I do not have to take a step to cut him. So we're going to show the relevance of non-telegraphic motion. He would not really want to be here. But when I try to cut Dan, he is going to simply pull his hand away. Because I'm being telegraphic. Doesn't matter if, if I'm fast and telegraphic, I'm still, he can see that. Okay, so anytime I do this wide and telegraphic, I'm pulling back, even if I'm trying. Okay, now, because I'm not being telegraphic, he's trying to pull it away, but he's in. So that's the reason why A, he, as a defender should not be inside this range doing West Side Story and I should be non-telegraphic. And now we'll show you one of the other ways uh, to not be telegraphic. One of the ways that will help me not be telegraphic is Dan's going to put his arm here and I, I have my hand up here and just every time I can't, I can't pull this back. So I just can't telegraph. I, he's pressing this lightly against my hand so my hand can only go forward from this position. It can only go forward. That's the way. Now, we'll show you another way you can do that that's also helpful as a solo training with a stick. So one of the ways, a number of ways that we can help not be to ourselves be not telegraphic other than just pay attention. I'm holding a stick and I'm, this would be facing forward, but I'm, and rather than having my striking side forward, which is what I would normally be doing as a standard stance, I'm putting my shoulder against the wall so that I can't pull the tip way behind me. I don't want it anywhere behind me at all, actually. So again, like Dan showed with the hand here, you could do that, but you could still bring the tip behind you. So the wall keeps me from bringing the tip behind me and it at least cuts down on my telegraph. I could still and go. That's still a telegraph, but at least you're getting out of the habit of this kind of thing, which is just there are people where this is actually formalized. And it's, uh, to me, that just makes my eyes roll all the way around. But this keeps you at least somewhat forward and I can't bring my hand back for the say that to do, a, uh, if I'm going to do a midline strike, I can't bring it way back here. I have to keep it in front of me. One of the things that Edgar Solite showed me is he actually just showed that he could tie a rope a, tightly around here so that you were doing, keeping this like this and not, you wouldn't be able to pull it back, but you could still do that and bring, bring your tip back like that, even with a the rope there. So that's why I'm showing it against the wall. Uh, so that is, and this applies, is relevant no matter what the weapon. So in other words, if I am swinging an ax handle, <laughs> I don't want this. I want to keep it in front of me. I want to keep it in front of me. Same thing again, or even longer. So get a staff and just it, this way I cannot bring it way behind me because I want to keep the striking motion here. I want to keep it here. And every time I do this, I'm going to bring it out from the wall here. Look where the business end is and look where my vulnerability is. My vulnerability to my opponent is preceding my defensive part. So this keeping. So these are all ways to try and help keep ourselves and our striking at the most base level efficient rather before we would go into any kind of sophisticated technique. I go into details on this with knife on my knife program. Uh, 
talking about the measure and other details, so feel free to check that out.